Hello, my name is Rebecca Gibney, and I am the Curriculum and Online Learning Specialist at Blast Intermediate Unit 17 in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And I'm here quickly to, brief, to speak with you about uh, developing your innovation toolbox and sort of like what is the definition of innovation? Why are we innovating? And how do we know we're using um, technology and innovation for the right reasons? So before we ever decide what we're going to use in our lessons, it's important to, under, to be able to understand why. And our main reason that we're using technology and innovation is for engagement. But how often do we simply just throw around the term engagement or engaged and not really understand what that means? A student can look engaged, but not really be learning anything. And so what we've sort of come up with are the three types of engagement, behavioral engagement, cognitive engagement, and relational engagement. And behavioral engagement is simply their students' efforts, the persistence, the partic participation, and the compliance in your lessons. Are they, are they engaged behaviorally? They're not acting up. Cognitive engagement is what it sounds like, the completion of academic tasks and monitoring his or her own learning. That's a huge piece right now in 21st century is that the students own their own learning. And um, unfortunately, oftentimes this part of engagement is what is assessed. Um, it's what's in the grade book, it's homework completion, it's participation. And so uh, not saying that's right or wrong, but that's sort of how that engagement is usually assessed. And then relational engagement is basically the feeling of belonging and being connected with not just their classmates, but with their teacher as well um, and the school community as a whole. So the sense of belonging and the positive social relationships. So when you're looking at a lesson, and when you start with engagement, like how are we engaging our students? It doesn't mean that every lesson needs to have all three, but in your classroom, in your content, there needs to be a healthy balance with these three engagement levels. So thinking about your classroom and thinking about a lesson that maybe you just completed or something in the future that you're planning to do, at what levels will you have your students engaged? It's an important question to ask um, because then we talk about innovation and what is innovation innovation is very much like engagement where it's one of those buzzwords right now in education and we just throw it around and not 100 percent sure like what does it mean to be engaged or i'm sorry it to be innovative innovation isn't simply just using technology it's not at all it's one avenue to innovate um but innovation george kuros the author of uh, the innovator's mindset he defines innovation as a way of thinking that creates something that is new and better. The key term in there is and. So I could have a lesson and I do something completely new with it and it makes it better and that's innovative. There doesn't need to be any technology associated with that. But what we need to keep in mind is that change for the sake of changing is never good enough. And that's where we're gonna fall into the traps with technology. So if you find an application or if you find um, a new practice that you wanna use, but you're just changing it because you, need to, you feel like you need to change, it's not gonna be a best practice for our students and doesn't mean that our students will necessarily be engaged in what they're doing. So the big question is what if? What if you implemented and you started being innovative? It doesn't matter if you're a first year teacher, a 15 year teacher, or a 30 year teacher. Um, anyone can be innovative. No one, it's, it's never too late to be innovative. And that question of what if and having that mindset, what if I tried this in my classroom? To be honest, the first couple of times, it's going to be a learning curve, not just for students, but also for teachers. But you have to keep with it and persevere through it, and then you'll see the payoff. So the question of why innovation, now that we've defined it, why is it important to be innovative? Our students nowadays are, nowadays are the Z generation, and they're entering into this 21st century workplace. And with jobs that are 
you know, sometimes replaced by robots. The one thing that they can't, that robots can't be, replace is that empathy piece and the human interaction piece. And so our students are, are really being asked now, and these are the ISTE standards for students to be empowered learners and digital citizens and knowledge constructors, innovative designers, computational thinkers, creative communicators, global collaborators. They're being asked to do all of these things. And by putting in some innovative practices, including some of the STEM pathways there, um, with inquiry-based learning, project-based learning, uh, some of the career pathways, and so on, we are, we are setting them up to be just these seven things right in front of you, the empowered learners, and so on. So that is why it's important, so that we connect our students with the real world that's out there for them um, when they graduate. It is not the world that we graduated into. The world is changing. And so we need to change, not for the sake of changing, but we need to change with the time so our students are readily uh, prepared. So the question is, when you start using innovation and then you start implementing some of this technology that's, that's there for us, the question is, in our classroom, in our lessons, are they engaging? Is it innovative? And then are they being 21st century learners or are they just consuming? Are you using the app or the tech tool or the innovative practice and they're just sitting there and consuming it? Or are they being, being asked to be 21st century learners? And then that big question is, is well, what is 21st century learners? What are 20, what do they look like? What does that classroom sound like, feel like? It's been defined that 21st century learners are able to do the four C's. So the four C's are collaboration, critical thinking, communication, and creativity. So not only are students sort of being challenged and asked to be these seven things from, you know, empowered learners, digital citizens, and so on, but we're asking that students graduate being able to communicate with one another. They're able to collaborate with people of all kinds. They're able to think critically, not just what's the answer? How did you get there? Or what's another way we could go about this? And they're able to be creative. So innovation touches on all four of these things. So in short, I just, I want to, before we dive into some technology and which is an avenue of being innovative and changing your lessons. So not just for the sake of changing, um, but to make it more innovative and more engaging. I, wanna, I want you to understand why you're using something. Um, it starts with the engagement. Can we engage our students at a higher level? And then you're moving into, okay, so how could this be innovative? And then you're moving into, okay, how can I use these practices to make them an empowered learner or to be a digital citizen? or to be a computational thinker. You're not gonna cover all of those standards in one lesson, in one class. Some of them you might not cover at all, but can you reach one? And then how are you getting them in each activity to communicate and think critically, be creative, and to collaborate with one another? That's the main, the main part behind in it, integrating technology into your lessons. It's not, oh, this app, this website looks cool, I'm gonna use it. There has to be a meaning and a strong, powerful why behind it. So I hope you enjoy checking out some of these technology tools. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and ask for some further guidance.